Hey everybody, my name is George and I'm an alcoholic. I've been through this process with the help of five Big Book Step Study sponsors. And um, you're okay? Okay. How's that, better? Uh, I've been through this process with the help of five Big Book Step Study sponsors. Um, I am uh, practicing 10, 11, 12 on a daily basis to the best of my willingness. Um, yeah, there is a solution. So uh, I first came to, um, you know, I first came to, to AA to help me stop drinking and just to, just for a, place, a safe place to go to stay away from drinking. I was not here to do have any kind of spiritual experience or uh, or to improve my life. You know, I did want improvement, but I just wanted the trouble to stop. And, um, and for me, it was like a really slow. I, I came in. My first AA meeting, I was 14 years old through the courts, and I came in for myself when I was 23. So all that time in between, I did go to meetings. Um, the things I took away from it was that, you know, all of these people that were sober wanted to be sober, and they congratulated each other on another day and another year, and, and that was good for them. But, you know, for me, it was I wanted to be able to drink, and uh, I wanted that oblivion. And... Um, you know, so I went because I had to go, and then when I really wanted to stop drinking, because it, it was it was obvious to me that alcohol was a problem in my life um, because of all the jackpots I got in. But how much help I needed with it was like you know debatable in my mind. So I thought like if I just you know could get away from it, which because I used to be able to stop for at times. And, you know, I had a brother that got sober nine years before me, and he lived out of his car. Um, he drank every day. He taught me how to be an alcoholic, all the things you need to know, like how to cover your, cover your eye with, you know, cover one eye when you see a double driving, and how to put the beer can under your seat when you get pulled over so it doesn't spill. And, um, you know, just all these different things. We used to, you know, um, you know, I got into a lot of trouble with him. And uh, I saw him get sober, and I saw his life get better, you know. Um, he did this work, and uh, he had a sponsor, and he had sponsees, and he, you know, he went through a halfway house. He started in Bridgewater, and went through a halfway house program. So, I, I knew that the AA program worked. I saw it work for him, but I thought it was kind of drastic for me, you know. So, um, so I went here to like basically, you know, kill some time before bedtime between work and going to sleep. And I had people drinking at home, you know, my roommates and. Um, you know, and, and so I, I was able to stay dry for a while, and I, I did that, you know, I, I went on, I could go on the wagon, so I thought, you know, I wasn't that bad, you know, and um, so I, I could admit alcohol was a problem, but alcohol, being an alcoholic and one that needed to go to church basements, you know, I was like, eh. So it took me, it took me a while um, of not drinking for things to get really insane. My life, my world got really small. I, um... I still tried to hang around with the old people. I had a friend that said, oh, now that you're not drinking, you're not going to disappear now, are you? I said, oh, no, no, you know, and his opinion was so important that I, like, I hung in there, and I went, to, went out to clubs and watched everybody get drunk around me, and with my arms folded, just pissed, you know, and um, miserable. And uh, I got to a point um, without drinking, you know, I thought the things that I needed to do was, you know, I, I dropped out of high school, you know, I started on a college track, and I dropped out of high school, I, uh, I started roofing, and, um, you know, I, I thought what I needed to do was, like, you know, get off probation, um, get a GED, go to take night classes, get a car that would cost more than $50, um, you know, register it and insure it like everybody else in Massachusetts. I used to think you were all suckers. Like, go to New Hampshire, you don't have to pay for insurance. Um, but, I mean, this is like, so I was insane, you know, and I was insane all my whole life. Before I picked up a drink, I had this thing, you know. And uh, I could see that now. I couldn't see that then. And, you know, it, it took me a lot of hard knocks and a, and a lot of living, you know, with alcohol removed to see, like, how much, how insane I was. And, um, you know, so 23, 23 comes around. I've moved back to my mom's house to get away from the people that are drinking every day at my, at my house. Um, I'm turning the garage into an apartment and she's, you know, I'm sanding drywall for like the 30th time because it wasn't perfect. And, you know, I put another coat on, <laughs> sand it off, completely covered. And, 
you know, my mom says, George. I'm like, what? <laughs> Dinner's ready. <laughs> So, you know, I, I walk up the stairs and I sit down to dinner and like, I don't even know how to apologize. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm completely insane and full of rage. This woman's like cooked dinner for me. It's sweet, so sweet to me. And I'm like, you know, screaming at her. Right. And so I just go up and like act like it didn't happen. Like I, that's my whole, that's my whole mode, right? My whole mode. Is, that's the only way I know how to handle it. So, um, and that's what I grew up with too. You know, so, um, so for me, it was like, I don't know, I just, I knew, I just wanted a drink again. You know, I wanted to get, I wanted to go back. Um, I wanted that sense of ease and comfort they talk about in here. And um, I didn't want the, what came with it. And I called my brother and I said, I, I need help. And he took me to a meeting and I started going. And, you know, one of the first books I got was a big book. And I, I went, um, I went to meetings and I did what, you know, I did the drill, the, the um, 90 and 90. And he suggested I go to one of each type of meeting. He, you know, he said, pick a big book, a young people's, an open speaker, 12 and 12. And I did, I took the suggestions because I was beaten. And I was beaten like, I knew that uh, there was more to this than not drinking. You know, that had been, through hard experience, I had seen that, but really still had no clue what I was dealing with. And so, uh, when I saw the 12 steps on the wall, I said, that makes sense. Like if I can clean up the past, like I was still haunted by all the things I had done and uh, all the people I had burned. And uh, I had no idea what to do with that stuff, you know? And I, I really thought I had such a low opinion of myself. I was so full of fear and full of resentment. And um, I didn't know that, like I couldn't articulate that, but I just knew I, I didn't feel good. You know, I felt miserable. And uh, I started going to meetings and you know, they, they gave me this book right away. Nobody kept it from me, but my willingness was still not there. You know, like I, I wanted to do the steps, but I don't want them to be done for me. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, so like three years into it, three years into it, a buddy of mine moves up to New Hampshire and they say like, you know, uh, oh, you're from the Boston area. Did you ever go to the Somerville men's meeting, you know? And so he says to me, like, hey, these guys are telling me, you know, and he said, no, I've never been there. And they said, what? You know, we drive down from New Hampshire every Friday night to go to this meeting. So he told me about it. And we said, we got to check it out. So we met up there and uh, it was on step four. They were talking about the sex part of, the step, of step four. And I saw a man up here, like, uh, share open and honestly about me, you know, for the first time um, in, in a way that I'd never seen before. And, uh, you know, I knew that night, like, I need to do this, but it took me, um, you know, I immediately, not long after that, I asked, I, I got a sponsor, and not long after that, I got my girlfriend pregnant, and, um, you know, I, and I was resentful of God, I was like, I'm keeping up my end, I haven't drank, <laughs> I go to meetings, I make coffee, and this is what, you know, this is what you do, <laughs> and nothing to do with me, so... <laughs> And I went to my sponsor and he said, George, you know, like, I don't have experience with that, but my experience is that whatever the problem is, the answer is God, so, which was not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I want a real solution, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, fast forward, so I get busy being a dad and, uh, you know, I start trying to like manage life and, you know, step studies in the back burner and, you know, and, and like they always say, like life will get colorful and uh, it did. And so for me, it was like this thing of like, I started uh, writing and I stopped going to meetings and I got busy with, you know, my own business and trying to provide for family and all this stuff. And like, there's all good reasons for doing that stuff. But like, you know, with this disease, like I'm just fighting against myself the whole time. And it's, it's like, you know, 130% effort and like 20% results, you know, and it's, it's like just such an uphill climb. And uh, full of fear, bidding jobs, doing it cheaper than everybody else, not making enough money, working all the time, not getting, you know, just all this stuff is like these results of this, it, it just goes out in my relationships and everything. Uh, you know, and so I, I um, you know, go forward a few, so I keep getting these places where I'm, you know, beaten into a place of willingness. Um, you know, I had sat down with my sponsor and like, I, and we were reading this, there is a solution. Like we went through all these and we read, sat down and read them together before we said the third step prayer. And he, um, you know, we went through and he, he pointed out like, I, I don't know, it's like I, looking back on it, like hindsight's 20-20, but like, I knew I was doomed, but I still didn't know. Like, 
how badly, I think not until after step four and five that I start to like, and even make an amends, I start to like understand how badly I was affected. And, um, and as I've stayed sober and lived this, try to live this the best of my ability, and, you know, I've, I've continued to recover from this, you know, um, but, it, you know, I, I keep learning more and more how I'm affected and it just seems to keep, like, the, there's no end to this, you know, it keeps going and going, like how much I'm learning about myself and how much I, I can re, um, need to recover. Um, so when we were reading this, like, I just wasn't, the denial is so strong, you know, and I had denial that kept me drinking for a long time, but, you know, so when, when we were reading through this, um, you know, my sponsor was able to talk to me about some things, uh, and, you know, I just couldn't put it together that, like, I, how badly I needed this, and, um, I don't know, I don't know, like, I just, I didn't have the experience where I came in and wrote, and wrote, and wrote, and got that done and moved on to the other steps, you know, I, I got away and came back, it took me about 10 years to get through step four, in, in real time, I, I can't even tell you, but it was, it was not, <laughs> not even a year, not even, you know, months of writing, I could have done it, you know, I could have knocked it out, um, but so, you know, when I finally came back, um, you know, I, um, I sat down and, and I, I had to start over again and do this. And, um, and at that point, I could see things differently when I read through this. And my sponsor took me through this, re this reading again. Um, you know, some of the things I see now, like today, like I don't have my book. I just I had to work this morning. So I came here from work and, um, you know, the, these things like on page 20, it talks about... Um, you know, the people that don't, can't understand us, like, what, you know, why can't, I can take it or leave it alone, why can't he, why don't you drink like a gentleman or quit? For me, like, I had, I had that thing where, like, the physical symptoms where I would take that first drink and I, there was no, there was no control over how many I'd take after that. So I could go on the wagon and stop for a while, but I would forget and I would, I would um, try that experiment of the first drink again, you know, but you know, when I came in here and I read all this, I was, you know, you know, they like lay off the hard stuff. I tried all those things. I tried just drinking beer. I tried switching friend groups, you know, the guys in the corner I got arrested with. So I started hanging around people that, that drank inside the house, you know, and, you know, uh, I drove home from that and got arrested for drunk driving. You know, like it was um, one thing after another. And the, and the, um, the relationships and the, the damage there was like huge, you know, um, you know, so for me, um, it talks about, you know, people not understanding this, and, and I was one of those people, too. I had all kinds of judgment on people. You know, when I became that piece of crap that I had been telling everybody about, you know about him, you know, I'd point the finger at everybody else and what's wrong with them. I became that person, and I could finally see it, and, and that was, you know, that was tough, tough for me. Um, so I am a real alcoholic. Um, you know, I, I can, I could stop for, for stretches, but... Uh, it, after the first drink, it, I have to have another and another. And uh, they talk about the glue on the bar stool, and you know I had all that. And also about um, you know alcohol, you know making decisions for me. It was um, you know I kept saying like it's everybody else's fault, or you know there was all these circumstances that were leading that were it, the reason why my life was going wrong. But for me, it was like I kept making these choices. Like I kept choosing alcohol. But I, I, had a, I mean, and I had this really young in high school. I remember a probation officer said, if you miss one more minute of school, I'm gonna lock you up. And I went to school first thing in the morning and the guy said, hey, do you wanna go smoke a joint around the tree? I said, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> so the bell rang and the kid says, I thought you couldn't be late for school. I said, I can't, you know. He said, well, he said you, couldn't stay, you couldn't skip school. And, you know, he said, but you couldn't, couldn't be late, and you're late. So, you know, I ended up, like, leaving and going and get drunk with him. And, uh, and, like, I knew it wasn't a good idea on some level, but I just kept going. And I had to face the consequences the next day. Like, I didn't want to go to jail. But I, the next day I was in shackles and handcuffs and, and uh, you know, on the penalty box and in the sheriff's wagon. And, you know, and that would just happen over and over and over again. Where, like, I would say I would never do this again, and it would come up again. And uh, so, you know, it talks about, um, you know, once in a while he may tell the truth and the truth is he usually has no idea why he took the first drink that you have, you know? And, uh, but I had a whole bunch of excuses why and a whole bunch of reasons why. And, uh, you know, none of it was my alcoholism um, or my insanity, you know, because I'm insane, you know? 
Um, so, um, so my my sponsor in, in reading this, you know, I see now like he was really trying to show me that I was doomed, you know, that it, you know, he's trying to, he wasn't selling me on it. He was saying maybe this isn't for you, you know. He used to say all the time like we don't have a, um, we don't corner the market on God, like we don't we don't have a monopoly on God, you know. He said that, uh, you know, and he said that there are other ways to do this, and this is the way that worked for him, and. He just, you know, laid it out there for me, for me to decide, which was the way that worked best for me. Like, I, it never worked for me to have somebody to tell me what I needed to do. And, you know, I just was not that guy. And uh, it, it made sense to me. And, and so, uh, you know, the, there's um, the solution of, a, of this higher power, though. You know, they started to talk about it here. And, um, you know, I, I had stopped doing business with God a long time ago because it was inconvenient, you know. And uh, I had all kinds of... Um, I, I, I mean, they talk about prejudice in the next in the next section, chapter, but they, um, you know, I had all kinds of ideas of what God could do and couldn't do for me. And, uh, and that the, if there was a God, it wasn't a God. And, and they talk about people bristling with antagonism, you know, like, that was me. Um, so even reading this this chapter, you know, I was like, uh, you know, it just was not what I wanted. I did not want the solution to be God. <laughs> um, you know, but the more, for me, it was like a lot of hard knocks that got me, um, got me to this place where, you know, where I was, I was willing. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I wish I had my book, the, um, they talk about this like when, at the time when I was finally ready, um, it says we in turn sought this, the same escape with all the desperation of drowning men. And what seemed at first a flimsy read proved to be the loving and powerful hand of God. Um, people, people in this program talked about, and I, I, one thing that really helped me a lot was going to step study meetings and listening to other people's experience. Um, because I, you know, I didn't have it. My experience was, you know, I, I needed to hear other people to talk about you know, what was going on with them and how they arrived here, and um, for me it was like this: the the when they talk about the spiritual experience, like mine was an educational variety. You know, I didn't have some kind of sudden sudden thing that happened to me, um, and it, and it it came over time, and, and it was really important for me to hear other people's experience so that I could learn about me, um, and and even you know. I, you know, we, we kind of just, we blew through this um, and got on to step four, you know. So, like, there, there was parts of this that a lot of this, like, I understand now after doing this, the work and looking at it again and seeing things differently. Um, there's, there's a part in here that I read today that, like, I didn't really, didn't really stick out to me before that they talk about this as an illness, right? And um, it, it involves those about us in a way no other human sickness can. And they talk about how it engulfs all whose lives touch the sufferers. It brings uh, misunderstanding, fierce resentment, financial insecurity, disgusted friends uh, and employers, warped lives of blameless children, wives and parents, anyone can increase the list. Um, the warped lives of blameless children, you know, like uh, a couple of years into that, after my daughter was born, my mother and I split. Uh, we got back together after a few years, split again, you know. Um, you know, I love my daughter. I wanted nothing but the best for her. But like the, this disease is like, um, it's, it's powerful. And, and I, you know, like I, um, she was affected by this, you know, but luckily she got, you know, she got into Alateen, um, which like not many kids do. And, and she's found her own recovery in, in the same, same recovery that I have, you know, um, the 12 steps, but, um, you know, like all the things I set out to do is really important for me to be a good dad. I didn't have a father growing up. And so like, I didn't know how to be one, but I knew I didn't want to be him, you know? And the one thing he taught me was like, I wanted to be there for her. Um, and I was there for her, but I, I see that, uh, you know, that back and forth with her mom and me and her mom's an alcoholic too. Neither of us have drank her whole, her whole life, but she's affected by this, you know? And, um, for me, that was like, a, it was a rude awakening you know, to see how badly I'm affected by this and, uh, and how badly she is affected by my alcoholism, you know. 
and and uh, and now, like in, in recent years, you know, I've been uh, I'm part of another fellowship, and I learned a lot about how I was affected too. You know, and uh, you know, this recovery for me, it, it's been um, this is you know, I I came in there in 1993 the last time, and it's been a long time that I since I've drank, you know, and it's been a while since I've, I I did my fourth and fifth step and, and made my amends. Um, but you know, one thing I, I've learned is like I'm still recovering from this. I'm recovering from the things that I did while I was out there. The, recovering from what I did to myself and what this disease did to me, and also recovering from the effects of it in my family. You know, this is a family disease, and it, um, you know that that really just stuck out to me today. You know, that in reading this is like this this illness. It just really it's it's far reaching, and um, and the recovery is too. You know, as devastating as this disease is, the recovery is relentless. I look at this room full of people, you know, and it's like, we all should not be here. You know, we all should be in, you know, in hospitals, jails, or institutions today, you know. But here we are with a chance to recover, you know. I didn't realize how urgent it was for me to get to do this work, you know. But, uh, you know, every every year that went by, it was like the con there was more wreckage piling up. And, um, you know, it was a lot easier to see when it was the drinking wreckage, you know, the, the in sobriety, it's a lot worse. And it's like, for me, it was relationships, you know, again, the agains in relationships. It was, uh, you know, settle, settling for less, not, not knowing, um, not being able to say, you know, be, not, not being able to say what I mean and mean what I say and, and say yes when I mean yes and no when I mean no and, you know, all of that, like just, just because I found these things in my four step doesn't mean I suddenly stopped doing them. It's like I really need to continue with 10, 11, and 12. I need to continue to talk to my sponsor and be in meetings and hear from other people and learn how to stop people pleasing. Because like I, I, knew, I knew what I needed to stop doing, but I didn't know how to do it, you know? So uh, I don't know, it's been a while since I've spoken in a step study meeting. And I, I hope I've, uh, I, I know, I, I always like when people share their experience more than the book. Like we just read this, so like um, I can go through it. But you know, I, I like to hear what what happens with other people. So um, you know, for one thing, I just um, I would say my sponsor said to me, you know, I, I had you know over a hundred resentments, and he said, you know, you could have five hundred resentments and you'd get the same thing. And he said, that, he said it it would be a shame for you to spend any more time doing your writing, like. When, when you could be doing 10, 11, and 12 and carrying this to somebody else, mm -hmm. you know? And so, I, you know, for me, it's like I, I uh, it took me a long time to get going with this, but when they did and I got going, you know, things really started to change for me. And uh, today, you know, I feel free today. I have a higher power that's, <laughs> that works in my life, but a higher power that's like um, personal to me, which people used to share about. And I was like, I didn't even know I wanted that. But this is like I have a relationship. I have this power that's in me, and I see it see it working through me. You know, um, these are all things I didn't know I wanted when I came in here. I just wanted like the, the trouble to stop. You know, and then um, continue to want the trouble to stop. But like, you know, it it for me it took like doing this work, and, and then it took continuing the work afterwards. You know, um, but that's all I got on. There is a solution. Thanks for listening.